morning, good Monday morning. Uh, on this day that we um, recognize the life and message of Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, happy Martin Luther King Day to you. I pray that you have a good and blessed day. It was a good day yesterday. We were kind of potentially snowed in. I don't know about where you were, but we had a lot of snow, but fortunately none of it stuck. And so we're in good shape this morning to be able to hit the roads, where I am anyway, but you use your own judgment in that. Um, this morning we're going to be looking at uh, John chapter 14 and, and kind of an important statement that Jesus makes in that. But uh, before we get into that, I just want to share some prayer requests with you. Barbara Ramsdale is going to be having surgery on Wednesday her cancer surgery, so be praying for Barbara as she goes in for that. James Wiseman, uh, the last report that I got, he is going to be having surgery on Tuesday uh, for bone repair, I think it's tibia, and he was beat up, banged up pretty bad in a car accident, so be praying for him, and pray for Wanda, his wife, as she cares for him after his surgery, and I don't think she's been able to see him since he's been in the hospital, so because of the COVID restrictions, but be praying for the Wisemans. Uh, pray for Constantine uh, this morning as, as God continues to minister to that family in his uh, cancer battle. And pray for his wife, Leah. Just give her strength and uh, the kids be lifting them up. And we just want to continue to pray for Vanessa. I know she's uh, going to be having her last round of chemo tom tomorrow, I believe. And so then we'll be making the decision as to where the treatment goes after that. Uh, Joan and Ken Moss be praying for them. Uh, Ken, I believe he's home from the hospital now, uh, but Joan caring for him. And she had to postpone her surgery to take care of him. So just so many prayer needs. And if you have prayer requests, please place them on the feed so we can pray. But as I was looking at John chapter 14 this morning, this old song came to my mind. I think I did it recently, but I just can't remember. His eyes on the sparrow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven to know?
up to the first verse in John chapter 14, Jesus, while He is there with His disciples on that, that evening before He would uh, go to the cross, He would certainly be arrested just a couple of hours later, He had begun to share some bad news with His disciples. Bad news from their perspective. Um, they had a different idea of the ministry of Jesus. They had a different idea of His purpose. It's generally believed that they thought that his purpose was to overthrow the Roman Empire and their rule over Jerusalem and the Jews and that they would be set free from that. But God's purposes were far greater than just overthrowing a momentary uh, kingdom that ruled and reigned, the Roman Empire. God's purposes and God's perspective was eternal. And I'm reminded that as we deal with life as we go through life, we've got to continue to remember and be reminded that God's plans and His purposes are from an eternal perspective, not a temporal perspective. What I mean by that is we kind of look at life, we as human beings, as this linear process, one event after another. But God doesn't see it that way. God sees it in a perspective that's beyond linear. It's not it's not encapsul encapsulated in time and space as we know time and space. But our lives and all the events of, of history are encapsulated in an eternal perspective in God's plan. And God's plans are always eternal, not just temporal. So what seemed like bad news to the apostles was really good news in God's perspective. Jesus, in response, knowing that their emotions, knowing what their emotions were, when they had heard this bad news in their eyes, he begins to encourage them in verse 1 of chapter 14 by saying, let not your heart be troubled. Do you need to hear that from him this morning? Um, did, you, did you get bad news over the weekend? Uh, did, did events of life turn? Maybe plans that you had had in mind, did, did they change because of an event or circumstances? Or someone else's decision. Um, 
did you get news maybe that that the company you're working for is downsizing? Did you get news that maybe the health uh, situation that you were hoping uh, to hear and the prognosis was different than what you expected? Hear Jesus this morning. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. He goes on to say, believe in God and believe also in me. In other words, if we, if we believe that there is a sovereign God, creator of the universe, who is in control over everything, then Jesus says, believe also in me. Paul would later explain the power and the preeminence of Christ in the book of Colossians where it says that he, through him all things were created and through him all things are sustained. And those all things that are sustained are not only the created universe, but your life and my life as well. If Jesus says, believe in God, then believe also in me. In my Father's house, he says, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go and prepare a place for you. Now here he's beginning to get them to think on the, the fact or the reality of an eternal perspective. This earth, this world is temporal. It will not remain forever. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that it's going to be destroyed and it's going to create a new earth. But he says, in, 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 a, in an eternal perspective, understand that in my Father's house there are many rooms. And you and I are adopted into the family of God as children of God. And Jesus says, I, I go there to prepare a place for you. And so... In our perspective, looking at it eternally, we need to understand and be encouraged by the fact that, that, that we can trust Him in knowing that this life is temporal, that you and I live in this body, it's going to pass away. This earth is temporal, it's going to be destroyed and renewed again, but in eternity there is a place for us with Him for all of eternity. And Jesus says, hey, there are many rooms there and I'm going to prepare a place there for you. And verse three, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And where I am, you also may be. And you know the way to where I am going. Jesus gives the promise here that there is coming a day when he is going to return. We may pass on before that day, but the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And He is going to return. He's coming again. We do not know when, but we can be assured because of the resurrection of Christ that we know that He's going to come again. And He's going to take us to be there with Him for all of eternity. And Doubting Thomas says in response to Jesus' statement that where I'm going, um, that you know the way where I'm going. Thomas says, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Have you trusted Christ as the way to the Father today? In our pluralistic society, the message is there are, there are many ways to God. There are many paths. There, there's, um, there's the Mormon cult. There's the Jehovah's Witnesses cult. There's, there's Islam. There's, uh, there's Scientology. All of these different ways our culture tells us is a way to that entity of God. But Jesus very emphatically says here, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And what Jesus means when he says except through me, that means placing our trust and faith in what Christ has done for us. That where he shed his blood on the cross as a payment and atonement for our sins. And that he suffered a wrath in our place that we should have suffered because of our sin that He is the way. When we place our trust in what Christ has done for us, believing God for His grace and His mercy and salvation through Christ, that we have the way then to the Father. And it's only through Jesus. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, 
If you had known me, then you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know Him, and you have seen Him. Jesus said, if you see me, then you've seen the Father. You want to know who God is? Look at Jesus, His Son, who in fact is God Himself. God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. A mystery that man has tried to explain for over 2,000 years. And the best as we can, we cannot explain it. How can that which is finite fully comprehend and explain that which is infinite? We can. Well, I pray the Lord gives you hope and encouragement today. Um, let not your heart be troubled. Put your, pray, put your trust and your rest in Him. See things from His perspective, not ours. I pray the Lord blesses you today and keeps you. May His face shine on you. Let's pray and ask God to give us an opportunity today to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart, whoever we may come across, whether it's a school or work, in the grocery store, in any other place. And if we recognize that a seed has been planted there, that God gives us the wisdom to know how to cultivate that seed that's been planted in their heart. And man, if by God's grace would allow us to witness Him save somebody today, that would certainly make our day. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. I want to ask you to, to hit that share button. Uh, to share this uh, this message with those that may be on your news feed. If you think it will encourage someone, let's do all we can to try to get the Word of God out to as many people as we can through the platforms that He's given us. Hit that share button. I love you. Pray God's blessings on you.